Hey everyone, Mike here and in this video we'll have a side-by-side -side comparison of the latest Android version 4.4 KitKat and the latest Apple operating system iOS 7. KitKat is running on the Nexus 5 while iOS 7 is running on my iPhone 5 for this clip. The first things you'll notice when powering on these phones are the lock screens. On iOS 7 this interface allows access to a bunch of things. You can swipe to the right on the screen to unlock the phone, you can drag from the top for the notification panel, you can drag from the bottom for the set of quick toggles and you can drag up from the lower right corner where there's a small camera icon to launch the camera. On Android 4.4 KitKat you get a bunch of options as well, like the ability to drag up from the arrow at the lower end of the screen for Google Now or the ability to drag from the right to launch the camera. However, the Nexus 5 can also take lock screen widgets if you've enabled them from the settings. As for the on-screen media controls, I do enjoy more the way they look on Android 4.4 with those full screen album covers but functionality-wise, iOS 7 is still a notch on top in my opinion. Regardless, let's move on and unlock the two devices. Nice looking wallpapers cover the entire screens, stretching behind the system tray bars, the docked apps and the menu buttons on the Nexus. However, there's still a translucent background behind the docked apps on the iPhone, but that's not something that bothers me aesthetically. Design-wise, both operating systems are meant to be simple, flat. iPhone 1 do enjoy more the looks of Android 4.4 KitKat with its shades of white, grey and black as opposed to the overly colored iOS 7. It's not like Apple's design looks bad, I just find it too childish for my liking. Design apart, the OSs are different in many ways. On iOS 7, like with all iOS versions before, the home screens are more or less a list of apps which can be grouped in folders. On Android, all the installed apps can be found in the app drawer and you can add the ones that you want on the home screens as well as a large selection of widgets. Android 4.4 is also closely integrated with Google Now which can be easily launched just by saying OK Google on any of the home panels and which also occupies the most left of the home screens. Siri is the iOS alternative for Google now, but it doesn't live up to its competitor here as it's not as fast as Google service and not as skilled at understanding commands either, especially if you have an accent like I do. However, Siri can perform system-wide tasks like turning on and off various radios and can be taught how a certain word is pronounced in your language, things you can do with Google now. Last but not least on the home screens, I should mention that on the Android 4.4 KitKat you can create more screens just like on the iPhone by grabbing an icon and moving it to the right onto a new panel. But you can also rearrange the screens from the menu you'll be getting while long pressing on a free area of any home screens. You can do that on iOS 7, but what you can do is swipe down on the home screens for the quick search bar. If you want to find a contact, an app, something inside an email or rapidly perform an online search. Moving on, I should mention that I don't like the animation within iOS 7. They make my iPhone feel slow when compared to the Nexus 5, despite the fact that Android 4.4 bundles its own set of animations. And if you haven't turned reduce motion on from the settings, the parallax effect and all those annoying transitions are going to make Apple's OS even slower. So if in the past I always praised iOS devices for being snappier than their Android rivals, well that's not the case anymore when looking at KitKat and iOS 7. Anyway, let's continue with our comparison. Both phones offer notification panels. On Android, this screen is simple and easy to understand, while on iOS notifications are separated on three different tabs. Also, there's no option to dismiss all the notifications at once, something available on Android. Besides this, both devices offer a list of quick toggles. You have to swipe from the bottom on the iPhone for it, or from the top with two fingers on the Nexus 5. The quick toggles panel on the iOS 7 is more elaborated and offers access to more options, including the audio player, the screen's brightness and a few apps, while on Android 4.4 each toggle is a shortcut for a specific chapter in the settings. Neither approach is perfect, but if I were to choose, my money would go towards Apple's implementation here. Another aspect worth mentioning is the multitasking panel, similar in both cases. You can switch between apps or scroll between them on the two operating systems, or swipe them off the screen to close them. You can only close apps one by one on Android, while on iOS you can swipe off up to 3 at the same time. Moving on, we should talk a bit about the dialers on these two operating systems. Clearly Android 4.4 wins here with a smarter dialer integrated with Google Now in order to get various details from the internet. For instance, if you're looking to order a pizza, you just have to search for pizza in the dialer and you'll be returned some numbers of pizza places nearby from Google Places. The dialer on iOS 7 is much more limited, but it does its core functions of making and taking calls. The default messaging app on Android 4.4 KitKat, Hangouts, is a bit more controversial, as it takes care of both your Google Plus chats and your SMSs. On iOS 7, the Messages apps integrates iMessages and SMSs. Aside from these aspects, it's worth mentioning that both operating systems offer a selection of pre-installed apps. With the Nexus 5, you get all the Google services, with things like Gmail, Maps, YouTube, Drive, QuickOffice and so on. 
With the iPhone there are things like Notes, iTunes, Newsstand, FaceTime, Apple Maps and so on. This cannot be uninstalled in both cases. On top of them, each side offers access to a vast ecosystem of third-party applications. I'm not going to compare the App Store with Google Play here, both offer tons of things. As a side note, there are more highly polished games and niched apps in Apple's ecosystem, while on Google's quite a few apps tend to be cheaper than their iOS versions or even free. All in all, each OS has its pros and cons. As an iPhone user, I've always appreciated the simplicity and the straightforwardness of iOS, corroborated with its sheer speed and reliability. The later two are no longer something I can say about iOS 7 though. Apps tend to crash more often than before and both the animations and the transitions are annoyingly slow and long. As a result, my iPhone does not feel as zippy as the Nexus 5 running vanilla Android 4.4 KitKat. And neither does the iPhone 5s, as the software bears the blame here, not the hardware. And when you add all this to the extras offered by top-tier Android smartphones these days, it's getting clearer that iOS is trailing behind Android, even at the highest level. Anyway, these are my conclusions on this Android 4.4 vs iOS 7 head-to-head -head comparison. But I'd love to know what do you guys think about this and what would you pick between the two. So make sure to leave your replies below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, share it around and subscribe to my channel for my future updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next clip. Bye.